All right, so in this little video, we're going to talk about the Matrix P. The Matrix P takes a perspective camera volume, view volume, and turns it into an orthographic camera view volume. We use the Matrix P after we've used the camera transformation to give whatever camera the user gave us sent to the origin looking down the negative Z axis. And before, we used the orthographic matrix transformation to take whatever orthographic view volume we had and send it to the canonical view volume, which is then sent to the screen. So what we've got is we've got a perspective view volume that we want to convert to an orthographic view volume. And the trick to it is that we want to take points on the same viewing line and keep them on the same viewing line in the same order, such that wherever the viewing line struck the screen in the perspective camera, it strikes the screen in the same place in the orthographic view camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this point on the screen Y sub S. So I'm working in the Y axis, looking down the negative Z axis. So this point on the screen is the point where the projection line for, or say, this point right here strikes the screen. So the first question is, what is YS? So here's our little view volume. I'm sorry. Yeah, here's our axis system. Here's the viewing line. And here's a point that we want to figure out where it goes on the screen. I'm going to put the screen right here. So this is what we want, Y sub S. This distance right here is Y. That's just how high the point is up on the Y axis. This distance right here is Z. That's just how far along the point is along the Z axis. And then this distance right here is just n, and that's because we put the viewing plane at the near plane, which is the front of the camera. That's the near plane, that's the far plane. We don't actually know this angle alpha right here, but what we do know is that the tangent of alpha is equal to the opposite edge of this triangle over the adjacent edge of this triangle, which would be y over z. However, this triangle right here has the same angle alpha, and we know that the opposite edge of this triangle over the adjacent edge of this triangle also is equal to the tangent of alpha. So we know that the tangent of alpha is also equal to ys over n. We know y, we know z, we know n, we just have to solve for ys. So we get ys is equal to ny over z. The next thing we need to do is we need to design a matrix that's going to give us ny over z as the output when we multiply it by a vector. So here's a 4x4 four four matrix. We're going to multiply that by a 4 element vector and get back a new vector. This vector is x, y, z, and the homogeneous coordinate, which we'll assume just starts off at 1. And we want to end up with ny over z in this entry right here. Unfortunately, there's no way to get ny over z using normal matrix multiplication. So we're going to use this homogeneous coordinate in the bottom to give us a value, which we will then divide everything else by. So what we want to do is we want to get z over n into the homogeneous coordinate. And then when we end up with x, y, z, z over n, we'll simply divide by n over z to homogenize the matrix. So we get back a 1 right here, and we get ny over z right here. So our challenge then is to design a matrix that gives us a y in the second component of the result and a z over n in the third component, and, I'm sorry, in the fourth component of the result. So in order to get a y in the second component, we just multiply add 0, 1, 0, 0 to the second row of the matrix. So I get 0 times x plus 1 times y plus 0 times z plus 0 times 1. That's the second element, which just gives me a y right there. The next thing I want is I want z over n in the fourth component of the result. So to get z over n there, I just multiply by 0, 0, 1 over n and then 0. So what that gives me is 0 times x plus 0 times y plus z over n plus 0 times 1, which gives me a zero, z over n in the fourth component of the matrix. I can actually do the same thing for x, and that gives me just an x in the first component. I don't actually want a z in the third component. In the third component, I just want something... In the third component, I just want something which preserves the order of the elements in z. So I'm going to multiply by n plus f over n, and then add in a negative f right here. And what this will do is this will just um, scale the z component such that each element um, ends up in the same order on the line, although not necessarily in the same place. So just to review, what we've done is we've derived the matrix P, which we're using to do the perspective projection, which takes us from perspective viewing to orthographic viewing using the homogeneous coordinate. And this is explained on slide 45 of the lecture notes, and a similar matrix is given in the textbook, although in the textbook um, everything is multiplied by n, so the whole thing is scaled by n. After the division is done, it all works out, but I think the derivation of P without the extra multiplication by n is a lot easier to follow. Great.